Usher. They talk about his. Usher, I'm tired of Usher. Oh. Goofy bitch. Oh. Got your asshole ripped open and the only thing you it inspired was loyalty. They ripped your ass open. Gene didn't say it. He said, check the records at the hospital. I'm saying it. You got your ass ripped open. Then you take Justin Bieber from Lily White, Canada and take him to the flavor of fuck off the kitty edition. Get his ass ripped open. Now everything's coming out. And the first thing you do is run the Bali with another kitty right who works with the man, L.A. Reed, that sent you to the Diddy flavor freak off. Not the flavor. <laughs> now you got Justin Bieber breaking up relationships and shit. Suck Odell Beckham dick at the club and the next thing you know, he don't even want Kim no more. Hold on, everyone. Things are heating up fast in the ongoing drama between music mogul Diddy and singer Jaguar Wright. Wright, known for her collaborations with artists like Jay-Z and The Roots, has been making explosive claims about Diddy's alleged shady dealings in the entertainment world. According to her, Diddy is a Hollywood handler, using his influence to control and exploit young artists for his own gain. She's also suggesting he's involved in darker circles, hinting at connections to secretive Illuminati activities and even human trafficking. This isn't the first time Diddy's been in the spotlight for controversial reasons. His ex-girlfriend Cassie previously sued him, alleging emotional and physical abuse. With such serious allegations, Diddy's reputation as a power player and alleged manipulator in the industry is under intense scrutiny. Buckle up, this story is far from over, and there's plenty more tea to spill. I'm sorry, I'm a little yeah. upset about it. Um because Al B. Shore just came out of his coma. I've been talking to Al and texting back and forth, and I'm just glad that he's alive to text. Yeah. 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 Um, but when you think about Kim, I was thinking to myself the other day, Uptown Records started by Andre Harrell, Ralph Heavy, and Puck. And Kim was the longest working employee, and she was there from the very beginning. She was Andre's personal assistant. Kim was dead. Andre Harrell, heart attack. Kim died from pneumonia, but there's the first coroner's report that said that she died. It was ruled a homicide and they found toxins in her body to prove that she had been poisoned. You know, they, they have poisons that create heart attack and pneumonia-like symptoms. And then right after that, Al had a meeting and I was gonna meet up with him because we were in Vegas and he said, no. You want to know what they all had in common, though? The survivors and the, and, and the late of Uptown Records, they were all writing tell-all books. Andre was writing a book right before he died. Heavy D was working on a book before he died. Kim Porter was working on a book before she died. And I'll be sure was working on the documentary of his life. And then he goes into a coma. Has Puffy ever been in a coma? Has he? Has anything happened? He must be the luckiest motherfucker because it seems like everybody that worked at Uptown Records from the very beginning. Just him. I guess Al disappointed you. You know, it's, I speak for a reason. 
when you see this bullshit ass motherfucking game fucking with people that you love, that you like, you know, that you. It's too many coincidences. Too many. You. Fuck you, honeycomb. Oh. <laughs> Stamp it. We gonna get you, ain't you, little dog? Mm. Congratulations, young lady. <laughs> Run as fast as Cassie did. <laughs> Has anybody asked they self about that shit? I mean, yeah, I'm sure a lot of people are asking about what's, what's going on with it. Is, yeah, a lot of people are looking at it like that's the way the new relationship should work. What, uh, to get paid? She was getting 500K a month. She quit because he, he dropped her down. <laughs> I think that's where they're at with it now. No, but understand this. Think about this. And there are women in this room. Why would you quit? What the fuck is going on that two hundred and fifty thousand ain't enough? Ladies. Like fuck the fact that, that that he. I'm just saying, fuck the fact that he cut it from five hundred to two hundred. Who the fuck gives a shit? Two hundred k. Who two hundred fifty k? Who turning down two hundred fifty k a month? Mm. What the fuck is going on in that relationship that two hundred and fifty k ain't enough? See some things, can see some things. That ain't worth 250k. That's gotta be some dark shit. Like people are not understanding that that girl quit 250k. Mm. Four million every quarter. Well, I'm sorry, a million every quarter. Shit. Now she was getting two million a quarter, but then she got you know, fuck you got going on. That's so deep that it ain't worth. When Diddy learned about Jaguar Wright's shocking allegations, he was determined not to let them slide, and the media frenzy that followed was intense. Diddy publicly denied all of Wright's claims, painting her as a disgruntled ex-collaborator seeking attention. He accused her of spreading falsehoods and went as far as threatening to sue her for defamation, asserting that her accusations were damaging the reputation he had worked so hard to build. The battle between the two turned into a full-blown media storm, and everyone watched as the drama unfolded. It's about to turn into like a whole nother scene, like a law scene from Eyes Wide Shut. Like, <laughs> this is looking a little weird. I mean, if Bishop Jakes was at a Diddy party, there could only be two reasons. Money or... Why do you think T.D. Jakes was at Puff Daddy's birthday party? <laughs> I, I mean, I, I just, I, I, you know, do you remember when Bernie Mac played the minister in Friday? Yes. That's how I feel about TV Jakes. Like, that's how I see, oh, Miss Parker coming for him. I, I but for him to be at a Diddy party? Oh, like I, I feel the same way about that as I feel about when Tyler Perry came to his church and laid hands on him and he caught the Holy Spirit from Tyler Perry. Tyler Perry is the bishop of what? <laughs> like I've never, like, and I cut a check for a hundred and I'm going to lay my hands on your bishop. And he said, ah, ah. and then the bitch said, it's on the fucking internet. He's, ah, he's doing all of this, right? And then there's a woman on, on the, on the dais, screaming, push the baby out, birth that baby, push the, I'm like, are we at church? Or is this about to turn into like a whole nother scene, like a law scene from Eyes Wide Shut? Like, <laughs> this shit is looking a little weird. I mean, if Bishop Jakes was at a Diddy party, there could only be two reasons. Money or sex. That's all that happens at Diddy Points. Money and sex. I, I, just, I hope it was for money. Charitable contribution. I hope it was for money because arguing about who's going to put the strap on is. Yeah. That can be a very uncomfortable situation. You know, we're going to pray on it. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Fans were divided. Some believed Wright's accusations and demanded Diddy be canceled, 
while others stood by him, accusing Wright of chasing clout. The drama quickly flooded blogs and gossip sites, with endless debates over who was telling the truth. Diddy's team released numerous statements and interviews in an attempt to clear his name, but the harder they pushed back, the more people began digging into his past, resurfacing old accusations and long-standing rumors. The situation spiraled, adding fuel to the already intense public scrutiny. Looking at this lawsuit, you know, Cassie, she alleges that, you know, Diddy, he'll get violent with her, and he'll get violent with any man that try to start a relationship with her. Bruh. He know who to do that shit to. You understand what I'm saying? It's certain dudes that he'll do that to because he could, he could get away with it quick enough. Oh, he got some. some industry insiders supported Wright's claims, saying Diddy's shady behavior was well known, citing Cassie's past accusations as proof. Somebody behind him, or oh, he got some people there, they no matter gonna take his way for it. It's only so far he's gonna go himself. It's only so far he's gonna go himself. So now, you know, he's gonna come at you hard, try to play it off. Because he know if he do anything and it comes back to him, it's a lawsuit. He slapped somebody, hit somebody, that's a payday for them. But he'll make up that whole atmosphere and then he'll look at one of the bouncers or look at somebody a certain way and they'll take over his mess. So, I could see him coming at somebody hard like that. But by itself, he ain't gonna bust a grape in a wine factory. But you don't have to. Right, right. But I wanna ask you, right? And I know you ain't signing. I know you ain't signing NDA, clearly. But did, did he make his order sign NDAs and people that work for him? Well, a lot of these rappers, a lot of these industry people, anybody who does business nowadays with the internet, they have indies, non-disclosure. That means that if you work for them, you around them, you can't disclose any of the information about them. It's the same thing that he gave to all his artists when he gave them their publishing back. I'm gonna give y'all y'all publishing, but y'all can't talk about Janice Cone, Justin Cone, uh, Sony, Bad Boy, or anything that happened. Y'all can't talk about none of that. But there's some artists that didn't say anything, that didn't sign it, and they able to talk about anything they want to. And I think that's those girls that was, I think Danny D. Kane. I think a couple of them didn't sign it. And boy, oh boy, they probably gonna go after him too. Cause I heard him and I'm giving you this, Aubrey. He stood up there and he said, in front of a lot of people, we were in the studio. And I said something to him and walked out the studio. He said, yo, I'm a drug dealer off and picked them up and, and, and pipped them out to my <laughs> pipped them out to my neck he said i'm gonna drug them out i'm gonna get them all on drugs and i'm gonna pimp their ass out to my neck. And i was like know somebody kids and walked out and there's somebody that heard me there's somebody that heard me I mean, well, it's not only somebody that heard me, it's somebody that I know who was in the studio at the time that happened, and I still talk to him today. And we were just talking about that the other day. He didn't move back to Indiana. I don't know why. I'm gonna give you that one. He said he was gonna drug them all out and pimp them out. Diddy's career suffered, losing deals and collaborations, and his reputation took a major hit, raising lasting questions. About Cassie, someone had asked her why she cut her hair, and she was like, uh, Diddy said he, he just liked it that way. 
And they said when she answered the question, it was like she was in a trance. I just don't know. Diddy just said he would like my hair this way. And he, how she didn't even have a thought about it. It was just what he wanted. That's how he operates. He has people followed. He has people watched. He does all kinds of fucking, he's a fucking piece of shit. I feel, I feel bad for the kids. Like, don't think that there are moments when I'm speaking honestly about that motherfucker that I pray that his children don't hear. Imagine having an enemy that has a position of influence in your child's life and knowing that that person sends you notes and messages every now and then. If you don't do this, if you don't do that, that boy is dead. And real quick, I, I, I have to go back uh, to the raid real quick with Diddy. Mm -hmm. um, his sons were there and he was not there at the house. Um, yeah. And he was, was quiet. the worst part of that. And to see his sons being hacked. Do you force your kids to do your perp walk? That was the that was the worst part, and all I could think about was Kim and Nisa. Mm. Girls, just her son. He left their son to be walked out backwards on camera for the world to see. Thank God Kimura got the girls. Nisa's son. Nisa and Wolf's son. And Quincy's missing. Quincy's missing. Ah. And lastly. After he was questioned by the feds. After. I wouldn't be surprised if he was in witness protection right now. Which means his father ain't never gonna see him. Have we seen the last or is this just the beginning of that saga? It's just getting started. True. Which is why I think people are so uncomfortable about me being in this position right now because of my press pass and because I'm gonna be in the courtroom for the Keefe D trial. If we get to the bottom of Tupac's murder, when that is finally revealed, 15 other murders will be revealed with it. And you will find that they were all committed by the same two people, father and son. Were you surprised by KPD's arrest for Tupac's murder? No. I'm just surprised that he hasn't given it up yet. I'm surprised that he hasn't gone to the feds yet because he just got stabbed in jail. Yes, he did. He's been beaten three times. And I'm going to say it for a fact, I know you the one pulling the strings. Reggie Wright Jr. Stop putting your dirty work on other people. You know exactly what the fuck you are. And so help me God if you don't keep my name out your motherfucking mouth. Hmm. Hmm. With um, the last time you were on the couch, you had mentioned, and it's crazy that you say these things. You talk about Bad Boy. You speak yeah. on Heavy D. You speak on Albie Shore. Yeah. And you say like, "Look who's standing." And now Albie Shore is now. He's being cryptic, not too cryptic, but. He's now. He's very cryptic. He's very cryptic, but. But he's speaking, he's speaking louder than he's ever spoken before. Ever. And the reason why he's cryptic is for the sake of his son. Imagine having an enemy that has a position of influence in your child's life and knowing that that person sends you notes and messages every now and then. If you don't do this, if you don't do that, that boy is dead. Allegedly. Imagine that. Imagine the nigga that your baby mom is fucking. Is telling you that if you don't do what he wants you to do, he's going to kill your child. And you know he's capable of it. Allegedly. Story in the Bible. Two women had two babies. One woman went to sleep, rolled over on her baby, killed her baby. The other woman's baby was just fine. 
woman whose baby died, she got up, she went and stole the baby from her, her roommate. Then they fought over who the mother was. They went before the king, King Solomon. He heard both sides of the story and said, give me a knife. Give me a sword. He got the sword and he was like, I'm gonna cut the baby in half and each of you can have a piece and then we'll be done with it. It was the real mother that said, don't harm that baby, she can have him. Why is nobody willing to accept as monstrous as people are finding out that Diddy is now that he wouldn't be willing to split Quincy in half? Because he would. Yeah, he said some years ago, like during a TV show, that he would like harm his own mother to get what he wanted, or some something along those lines. So, well, I don't blame him for wanting to harm that. She's a victimizer and his pimp. She is first pimp. The feud between Diddy and Jaguar Wright has reached explosive new levels, drawing the entire music industry's attention. Wright continues to make bombshell accusations, calling Diddy manipulative and claiming he exploits young artists. Despite Diddy's attempts to protect his image, including possible legal action, Wright shows no signs of backing down. The industry remains divided. Some believe Wright's claims, while others stand by Diddy. Meanwhile, Wright's ongoing revelations have fans digging up past rumors about Diddy. With each side pulling punches, this saga is far from over and the music world is bracing for more shocking twists.